Welcome to another episode of the US Weekly News Update. And this week in the news, we have a drone strike test. We'll talk about that in a minute. Then we'll talk about an update on the FA hobbyist test. There's some additional information that came out. And I'm also going to talk about the FA webinar series that they put on. Also, I'm going to talk about DJI that is going to manufacture drones in California. And then finally, I'm going to talk about Europe that is going to establish a set of common drone uh, laws across all the different countries. So let's go ahead and let's get to it. The first thing I want to talk about is the drone strike test that came out from this company in, uh, in Germany. It's the uh, Fraunhofer Institute for High Speed Dynamics. And what this company is trying to do is they're trying to create a set of uh, standards, a, t a test bench if you want, and using a scientific approach to develop some data as to what happens when a drone collides with, a, uh, with an aircraft. Now, there's not much actually actual data available at the moment. And either what we have is based on the computer simulation, it's based on the assumption that may or may not be reasonable, or it's based on some kind of wing design like we've seen last year in October of 2018 that is just an old wing design. So not a very, not a whole lot of, of really good information available out there. And when you see some of the scenarios, it really takes a, a perfect hit on the wing uh, in order to create these scenarios, which is highly unlikely. Now, I'm gonna preface this by saying that I do believe that drones can create uh, uh, damage to an aircraft, and especially if it hits the, the windshield or if it goes and hits uh, one, uh, one of the motors, one of the engine then it can create some, uh, some, some drastic uh, damage, which I think uh, could cause an airplane to go down. Now, I don't wanna be that person that just uh, goes out and, and, and starts scaring everyone with scary scenarios like we've seen in some of the news, but we do have to be aware of the fact that we are flying with other airplane. I've said this many, many times in other videos, and, uh, and, and this is my stance, I'm gonna keep saying that. Now, back to the news. The, um, the, the, the company, the, the, the Institute for High Speed uh, Dynamics, what they're doing is they're using compressed air to basically accelerate uh, parts, battery parts and motors onto aluminum sheets. Now this is different than what we've seen before where drones were being flown into the wing. Now this compressed air is going to accelerate these parts at a speed uh, between 257 miles an hour to 570 miles per hour, which is a really high speed. Now these tests, they're designed to basically come up with some kind of, of modeling that can be used to predict the impact that drones are gonna have on aircraft components as aircraft components are being manufactured. So this is a different approach than what we've seen before. And I think this is a little bit more unbiased, if you want, a little bit more scientific than the, the tests that we've seen in the past. Now, I need to note that most aircraft at least in the US, cannot fly faster than 200 or 250 knots, which is 230 to 287 miles an hour uh, below 10,000 feet mean sea level. With that being said, the test that they're doing falls kind of the, the lower uh, speed falls within that, that range. Now, also, I need to note that some faster aircraft like military aircraft are allowed to fly at a much faster speed at low altitude. And so, so I think this test actually does make sense that they want to test it over a wide range of speeds. Now, I wanna hear from you. I wanna know what you think about this kind of testing that is not testing an entire drone, but it's testing parts. And um, I wanna I want, I want hear about you. I wanna hear what you think. And so leave a comment in that in the comment section and let me know what you think. Now, do you think also that a drone could cause an accident if it actually hit an airplane in the wrong spot? And, um, and do you think that windshield should be tested? I do personally think that windshield should also be tested for a, a direct impact. Um, I fly, as you know, also aircraft, manned aircraft, and the last thing that I want to see is a, uh, a drone coming into the windshield and hitting the pilot, uh, rendering him unconscious or her unconscious, and uh, that can lead to, uh, to something pretty tragic. So with that being said, let's move to the next thing, which is an update on the FA hobbyist test. And I want to talk also about the FA webinars. Now, there was a clarification that was made by the FA that everyone, okay, everyone that includes part 107 remote pilots will have to be taking the, the test, the hobbyist test in order to fly as a hobbyist. 
As you know from previous videos I've made, uh, you can still, even if you're a remote pilot under part 107, you can still fly as a hobbyist. Now in the future, when the test comes out, you will have to follow that procedure and take the test as well. So you'll have to take two tests uh, in order to prove that you can fly either as a hobbyist or as a remote pilot. Now, this came from a, an FAA webinar. If you haven't attended one of those, make sure that you look for the list and, and I'll keep you updated when they come out. But these are great webinars. They, they have a lot of great information. And uh, the, the gentleman that, that um, does these webinars, his name is Kevin Morris. He's the, uh, the FA drone guy. That's kind of his hashtag. Uh, he's great at answering questions, at making things very clear. So if you haven't done so, there is one coming up on July 18th at uh, 4 p.m. Eastern time. And the topic is what is Lance? So uh, the, the new um, authorization system that is coming out on June 23rd. I talked about this last week. Um, you can go right here. I'm going to put a link in the description where you can register for the webinar. Hope, hopefully by the time I publish this, there's still room. I am uh, registered for it. I'm also going to put a link in the description to show you uh, where you can find the recordings. Unfortunately, the FAA doesn't really make this uh, very obvious uh, where you can find all these recordings. Uh, so I'll put a link down there. Uh, hopefully if the FA is watching, I don't know if Kevin is watching my videos, but if he is, uh, let's, can you guys make this more available and, and, and just uh, make sure that we can see uh, where the old recordings are. I, I keep sending students to that page because I think there's a lot of great information. So the last one from a couple weeks ago is going to be in the description. So go ahead and take a look at this and watch the video. Lots of great information. Now I want to hear from you. What do you think of the decision by the FAA to actually require remote pilots, uh, part 107 already certificated people to take an additional test to fly as a hobbyist to fly for fun? Let me know in the comments and be nice. The next piece of news I want to talk about is DJI is going to be manufacturing drones in California. They just announced the plans to do this uh, this week. And the news came as DJI launched their uh, government edition drones. And you saw this last week. I talked about it in the last news update. And uh, it looks like they're going to be manufacturing the Mavic 2 Enterprise in California. So I think this is kind of a good news. Um, I, I'm sure there are some political or, or uh, economical uh, decisions behind it, as there is for every company making moves like this. But I think it's interesting, more jobs in the US, so I think that's a, that's a good thing. Uh, this, uh, this government thing, if you want to see the update, uh, check out the video from last week on the news update. I also want to hear from you on this piece. What do you think is going to happen to the price of the drone, especially the Mavic 2 Enterprise? It's going to get cheaper, going to get more expensive. What do you think this move of uh, bringing the, uh, the, the manufacturing to the US is going to do to the price for you and me, the consumer? The last thing I want to talk about is Europe that is going to establish common drone rules all across all the different countries. Now, this came out on June 11, the, uh, the EASA, which is the European Union Aviation Safety Agency, basically the equivalent of the FAA. They publish a set already of common rules that are going to be applying to all the countries. Now, these rules will help, they say, uh, help the drone operators to have a clear understanding of what is allowed and what is not allowed, which I think is great. And uh, also, this is going to allow drone operators to basically operate across all the different countries uh, once they receive authorization from their own country, which, again, I think is a great decision. Now, uh, one of the, 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 one of the rules that EASA has put forward is that all the drones will have to be individually identifiable so that the authorities can actually trace a particular aircraft uh, if it's necess necessary. Now, these rules are going to go into effect on June 2020. Uh, so we have about a year before this goes into effect, but all the rules have been already published and there, there's more information coming out from EASA. Now, do you fly in Europe? Is this something that is going to impact you? Please let us know in the comment. I want to hear from you guys. Um, as some of you know, I grew up in France and um, I've actually, from my previous job as a, um, as a flight school um, manager, I had to deal with EASA uh, 
two different times. I've, I've actually uh, partnered with schools in Europe. So I understand this, uh, the European side of things a little bit as well. And uh, I think it'll be interesting to see what each of the entities. Now, if you, if you don't, if you're not familiar with this, EASA is kind of the, the big entity that supervises everyone, but each country still has their own aviation agency that issues licenses. Everything has kind of a, a common theme, but each country also somewhat applies the rules differently. So uh, when I worked in the past, we work with England. And uh, if we had sent our students to France, then it would have been something different. If we had sent them to Belgium, then it would have been something different. Each of the agencies kind of interprets the rules slightly differently, if you want. And, and they are also different with paperwork. So. Anyway, with that being said, if you have, uh, if, if you're going to be flying in Europe or if you're already flying in Europe, let me know in the comments. I want to hear from you. I want to hear your, uh, your side of these changes. Also, I want to hear if you flew on the 4th of July and you get some cool footage, um, obviously legal footage uh, of the fireworks, something that was safe. Please leave a comment in the, uh, in the comment section with a link to your YouTube page. I want to see your videos. I want to see what you guys produce. This is it for today. This is it for this week. I'll see you again next week. And hopefully uh, you enjoy this. Like the video, leave a comment and also uh, subscribe and I'll see you next week.